Hey, welcome to the big board. Here we go, looking at the NATO Division Commander game from SPI. It's a 1979 or 1978 title, and uh, what we've done, here, what we're doing here, is playing an umpired version. And you may wonder why, if we're playing an umpired version, why all the pieces are on the map for both sides. Well, it's because I'm the umpire and you're the player, <laughs> and <clears throat> you have uh, been very successful with your intel uh, gathering for your very first turn. So let me describe to you as the controller what you believe has happened and here's, and here's what you know. Uh, what you know is that uh, uh, two full divisions of Soviet forces have entered the board and uh, you're not exactly sure where they entered but based on the... Uh, let me just scoot this forward a little bit. Based on the trail of units, and I'm giving you a freebie over here because I you know, I didn't roll for intel there, but uh, these these couple of guys here, uh, let's just say they were <coughs> inferred or uh, by intel or reported by by civilians in uh, in this town here. So your forces are facing off against two divisions, and you have uh, a com an ex company here, an extended uh, formation, another company here, an extended formation, and another company here, and one over here. Uh, which makes up uh, the battalion uh, of the 3-8 uh, me uh, mechanized something or other. So uh, from the 8th Division. Uh, so these forces entered the board and when they first hit they they touched here and then uh, rolled this uh, recon unit rolled down to here immediately tried to conduct a hasty attack uh, in, in it well an attack an unprepared attack in, an, in administrative mode. That didn't work out so well, so it was forced to retreat and take a two uh, two step losses. So, with that information in hand, knowing that these two units were here, uh, we then uh, moved up forces from 27th Infantry Division, uh, Mechanized Division, and uh, we brought in uh, the Seventh Guard Tank here. And I just knocked that stack. I love it when that happens. Oh. We moved all the 27th forces up uh, as far as they could go based on the doctrine-based movement mechanics that could come with the game. Because remember, I pre-programmed the Soviet forces to conduct their operations. So they're going to stay in administrative mode. They're going to try, uh, typically they're going to try to uh, immediately bounce through an, at uh, an attack of force uh, uh, in AM mode. And if that doesn't work, they will then commit to uh, uh, going around uh, and or encircling forces and then uh, trying a hasty attack. If a hasty attack fails, then they'll fully deploy and do a deliberate attack on the forces that, 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 excuse me, that they confront. So this hasty attack occurred, and uh, it was a, an expensive proposition for both sides. The Soviets actually had a very good, a very strong attack, but they lost... Uh, <coughs> They lost a step or two, I forget now what it was, and the Americans lost two steps as well. And they elected to take a two-step loss, not a one-step loss and a one-step retreat, which they could have done because they would have been eliminated based on their zones of control here. So they decided they couldn't move here because you can't stack. Uh, so they decided to stand firm and take the losses. So now that the TO level or the strength level of these three, this extended company hour is now down to four. So that's what's going on there, and over here, the same sort of thing, except there was no attack conducted. Uh, this was kind of at the the uh, upper end of the movement uh, cycle for these guys, and we didn't want to try and change formation because it would use up uh, too much time and we wouldn't get to conduct the attack. We're using some optional rules that we found that kind of tie in together uh, movement, time, and combat based on an eight-hour turn, which is what these are. And uh, and if you want to change mode during the turn, you can do that. You need to use staff points and uh, and time uh, to allow that change, which makes the game a slightly more dynamic, and it's pretty interesting, actually. So so we're having a little bit of fun with this. So we've got the Soviets moving up. It's now the, uh, the Allies' uh, turn, the NATO turn. 
And these U.S. forces have uh, thrown out, I think, uh, 16 CSP for uh, combat support points for Intel. So they've governed 3, 6, 9, 12. Okay, so only 15 uh, CSP uh, to garner what's going on where. We even searched, decided to search here for you to uh, make sure that nothing had penetrated behind you. So you now know what you know. Next turn, uh, we'll, uh, you'll need to make a decision about which sectors you want to search again, and, uh, and we'll kind of go from there. Now, uh, the, the reason why we chose these sectors was based on the movement and the connection here with the various units. So we, we, we allocated uh, search pattern in this block and not over to this side because of the number of units that have been uh, touched here. So this now gives you a full picture of what's going on. Next turn, you may not have as complete a view. All right, so that's what's going on there. Now I will be uh, popping up a quick, uh, a quick poll on the blog, and I'll be asking you what you want to do with uh, these forces here, uh, these, these companies here, whether they're gonna stand and fight, or gonna attempt to try and uh, uh, move back and uh, <clears throat> go through the uh, relief insertion exercise where they need to uh, kind of try and sneak away. And what you're going to do with these three battalions here, uh, where are they going to go, where are you going to position them, and uh, always with the view in mind that you're trying to protect this kind of uh, this block of exits here to prevent uh, rapid Soviet exit off the board. All right, there you go. Uh, let me see what else. And I think that's it. So I'll, I'll pop up some questions for you to answer, and we'll see what happens from here.